Now, I know that you're on Instagram, of course, and now Instagram is owned by Facebook or its parent company, um, Meta, of course, and they have metrics all their own. So in addition to what your point of sale system is measuring. And now just a couple of minutes ago, you said one of your strengths that, that you know, um, translates from psychology to this role is listening. So what metrics would you say you measured that you then observed and listened to, pivoted in some way based on, on that feedback? Instagram attracts all sorts of things. Uh, Meta attracts all sorts of things. So one of the things, the most simplest of, of uh, data that was given is what time of day your customers or your followers are most active. And so, I mean, it would, it would it makes sense to not necessarily post at 6 a.m. when my customers are not as active versus maybe from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. when you can see that they're, they're uh, most active on the app. And so it's what, that's what we would do. We would post at those times and you would see uh, an increase in engagement and, and purchases because I'm looking at that data and I'm, I'm making the decision based on what, what Instagram insights are telling me. So that's just one way. So that's one. Okay. Um, any other metrics you've, you've observed and listened to? Mm -hmm. The other one is, and I know that mostly women are our are customer base. So you have, I believe it's about a 92% um, rate. I think it's 92% of our customers are women based on the insights from Instagram. And they are they range between the ages of 24 and 34. Instagram also gave me that information. So then I we would use that information to determine what type of content to put out because we know that the customers are going to respond much better to that. So if I know that my customers are women, um, ages 24 to 34, I'm going to talk to them about things that women experience. For example, hormonal acne. That's a big one. That is one of the most, one of the biggest issues besides the dark spots that, that women experience. And so I'm going to talk to them about foods that lend themselves to hormonal acne. I'm going to talk to them about skincare routines that they need to follow or things that they need to cut out because I'm talking to a 24 to 34 year old woman based on Instagram. Based on Instagram. Thank you, Instagram. And your metrics also evidently indicated what was your biggest product. And so you make more of your biggest product if that's your biggest seller, right? The dark spot, the hyperpigmentation corrector. Correct. Do you make it, like, is there any limit to how much you make? Do you try to like, you know, keep supply back or how do you, do, how do you work that? Oh, it is around the clock because we know at this point, we know that the dark spot corrector is going to be purchased. And no matter any time of day or night, but, you know, starting out, of course, we were looking at that trend, like, okay, people are starting to purchase this a lot more. That's where we, we kind of need to put our focus. That's where we need to stock up on our ingredients. That's the type of content that we need to put out. Those are the types of emails and text messages that we need to send to our customers because the dark spot corrector is selling. So we try not to make too much ahead of time because they are natural ingredients and we don't like our products to sit on shelves, but we do know that that's going to, that product is, is in constant demand and requires constant production. Also, you had mentioned sourcing your materials. I mean, with um, the supply chain as it is, sourcing materials is a major consideration once you look at, at the metrics coming in. Anything else, any other metric that you've observed that you definitely have responded to? I would go back to the customer retention and versus new customers. Because once we once we get a customer, they're there. Once they've they've gotten the product, they've determined that they they like who I am on social media because that's part of you know, selling on social media is they have to know you, they have to like you, they have to trust you. So that's one aspect of it. But um, also, um, we're looking at the new customers. So if we see that we're retaining our customers, but maybe we need to take on new customers based on what my, the data and the insights are telling me, then maybe we run ads then to say, okay, well, let's see if we can pull in some new customers because insights is telling us that. All right. 